Okay, guys, welcome to Build and Paint with Mike Learn and Texas Toast. Um, thanks for everybody for coming out. I'm glad everybody got to find the place. Even Brad, even though he was late. Brad, yeah, it's okay, Brad. It's okay. You said you were going to be the last one every time. So, yeah. so um, uh, this is a very ambitious build. So we're going to be. Uh, we've got. Only five days to do it, but we have all five days to do it. So um, for those of you who go to the upright every night, you might want to yeah drink drink some water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just have a couple things to tell you guys about. Um, in the uh, the uh, the pilfered mailboxes from uh, the U.S. Mail, there is uh, all of your parts for the guitar, as well as a, a waiver that if you don't sign it, my attorney will be mad. Um, there's a handful of safety rules here in the shop. Number one is do not bleed in my shop. Okay, all of the tools want to kill you. Um, it's not that bad, but um, we will be with you the whole time, but you guys are going to be using a lot of power tools. Um, not today or tomorrow, but starting Wednesday when we start with next, you guys are going to be doing power, using a bunch of power tools, and they, uh, they will kill you. If you, if you give them half a chance. If you make a mistake, you will pay in flesh. So do not bleed in my shop. Um, rule number two is we are in Colorado. Um, I'm no one's dad, so if you guys want to go out at lunchtime and smoke a bunch of pot, I'm not going to say no, but what I can say is no power tools if you want to do that. Cool enough? Okay. Um, was there another rule that I missed? Uh, keep it classy. Keep it classy and keep it sexy. Yeah. No, wait, those are missed. They Switch must. those around. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is going to be a lot of fun, you guys. Um, Chris and Mike and, and myself are all very happy to have you here. I don't know if Diana is or not, but I bet you that she is. Um, no, so this is, this is uh, you guys are, are uh, those, those of you guys who have been here before, Doug and Dave and Rod, um, you guys know that this is something that, this is a culture to me. This is more than just something I do. This is who I am. And uh, I, I'm really, really pleased that you guys want to be a part of building electric instruments and, and making something neat. Having said that, I'm going to hold you guys to a higher standard because these guitars are going to be really, really cool when they're done. And I think that none of you will be, if I were to ask you today, which I will, and I'm going to ask you on Friday, what you, what you thought it was going to be and what you, now that it's done, what you think. I think you guys are going to be blown away at how neat these guitars are going to be. Um, has anybody bought cases from Ike? One, you bought one, Stephen? You got, okay, so I got one here. I, yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Mine's on its way back. Yeah. So I've got one here that somebody brought, uh, or Ike dropped off. Ike will be by from Flipside. Ike will be by, and he'll, um, uh, he'll be bringing more stuff as, as he gets it in, so... Um, mm -hmm. But other than that, so uh, quick question to on that: Like when we paint these all up, is it going to have to sit here for a while before it could actually? You're going to take it home paints? with you when you leave. Okay. When you walk out of here on Friday, you're going to walk out with a guitar that we kind of expect you to rock out a little bit. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So everybody's going to walk out of here on Friday at five, probably drunk and with a really awesome guitar. Cool. Uh, if you don't drink, you'll get the really cool guitar. Um, okay, a couple of administrative things. Does everyone know where everything is? Everyone knows where the bathrooms are, all that stuff? Okay. Um, everyone brought something to eat for lunch or something? Okay, we got fridge, we got a microwave, we got a toaster oven. Um, we used to do this thing where we would just break for lunch and everyone would scatter to the four winds and it took a long time to, um, to get everyone back and, and going again. So we thought, well, let's just have lunch here. It makes it a little easier. Um, um, but if you didn't bring anything for lunch, there's, there's a handful of places around here that will probably not give you diarrhea too bad. Um, the, uh, let's see, uh, um, Tuesday night, we've got a table reserved at Odyssey Beer Works, thanks in large part to Jim Kaloje. And uh, Wednesday night, we are all going to Jim's house for barbecue. Barbecue, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Normally what happens on Thursday is we go to this crappy steak joint um, called Mickey's Top Sirloin. When I told Jim that we normally go to a crappy steak joint, he said, well, I don't want to eat crappy steak. Why don't I just have everyone come over to my house? 
So, if you want to have an excellent steak at Jim's house, give Jim some money. He's getting ribeyes and... Yeah, so, I, I don't know about you guys, I don't want to eat bad food. So, y'all just chip in, we'll go to Costco, pick up some nice ribeyes. Uh, my wife will make double baked potatoes and we'll make some other sides and we'll just cook them there. It'll take 15, 20 minutes. Those of you who know Jim already, already know what I'm about to say. Those of you who don't know Jim, you want to do this. <laughs> okay? So... Um, okay, so so you guys will probably want to talk to Mike or Chris for the next two days because if you come to me, I'll say, no, that's not good enough. Keep doing it. Um, so yeah, if you want the answer that you if you want the answer you want, go to Mike or Chris. If you want the right answer that will be delivered in a uh, not very friendly way, come to me. No, I, 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 I'm going to be I, no. I just I really I really want you guys to have have awesome guitars, and I know you're gonna. So take your time with this stuff. Lessons from the last class are, are this. You don't have to do everything, okay? And start on the back, okay? So what happened last time is Mike's got a bunch of really awesome techniques. Usually what would happen is the guys would start on the fronts and then they'd do the backs and they're like, I like the back better because they have more practice, okay? So start on the back if you remember. Um, and, uh, and you don't have to do every single thing in there. You, you can do every single thing, but you don't have to. Okay? Um, Doug. I, what, what got a, poor Doug, come on. So um, uh, you guys are going to get to know each other really, really well in the next five days. Like I said, we've got all five days, but we've only got five days. This is a really ambitious project. We've got a bunch of work to do, so I'm going to shut up. Um, but I, I, I want to say one more thing. If you are not working on your body and you are not working on your neck, you will not finish this guitar by Friday. Okay? So work with alacrity and always be doing something. And uh, Chris and Mike and I will all be here to help you and push you in praise. I won't, but yeah, the other guys will. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're all going to be here. We're going to make sure that you guys walk out of here with really, really excellent instruments. So, Chris, you got anything? Uh, no. All right, Mike, it's your show. All right, well, i uh, start off. There's my wife, Diane, over there. She's going to be helping us out um, with some of the vinyl needs. There, you know, the thing we learned in the last class was don't give the world is your oyster program, you know what I mean? Because everybody started having so many different things going, it was starting to become a little bit of a cluster, and we couldn't keep things on schedule like we would. So we tried to streamline a little bit, giving some people, you know, some options and stuff, but some of the things that we're focused on, like on this one where there's a banner, if you decide to use the banner, um, we might be able to find some flexibility to adding the, a text or a phrase or something that you might want to put on or personalize it a little bit. Um, as far as the imagery goes, don't be intimidated by what you see on the package of the pinup. I have designed this. Uh, I could, I could teach uh, a squirrel with no fingers how to airbrush this thing, and uh, it really won't be difficult. So don't, don't worry about that. We're gonna actually get set up um, to actually rehearse and try to practice some dots. I'll show you guys some basic skills. Uh, for the guys who have been in the class before, you probably haven't airbrushed since the class, would I imagine? And then we'll probably just do the same thing you guys yeah. are, have gotten in that class. So, it's going to be frustrating at times, but I can guarantee you one thing that's not going to fail you is your equipment. So, everything here is real top of the line. We, we don't hold back, because I, I really thoroughly believe that one way to hate what you're doing real fast is to have shitty equipment. So, uh, and secondly would be shitty instruction. So, we're not going to have any of those. We're going to have everything, you know, pretty much ready to do what we got to do. Uh, the equipment's going to be functioning properly. I'll, I'll spend the time with you guys about the materials. We'll talk about that, you know, and everything. But what we'll do first here, initially, just to get set, let's get everybody's airbrush hoses plugged in, get the hoses all dialed in, get them hooked up to the uh, junction boxes that we have and the little plentiful manifolds. Got dots. First thing I did was I just practiced trying to keep these dots the same size. Some of you guys will get in and you'll be like, Arr! you know, you don't really need one really big. Just want to try to get the control where you're only putting on a little bit of paint. 
just enough to mark a spot. So next course of action is what we're going to do is we're going to do diagonal strokes. Actually, let's do horizontal strokes. We'll go horizontal left to right, and then we'll do horizontal right to left coming this way. So stop, 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 stop. Some people ask, well, how come you just didn't keep uh, the airbrush going and paint one solid, solid line? Well, that's not really the exercise. You're not going to be quite ready for it because it'd be much harder to like try to go. So you want to kind of focus on go just going from dot to dot. That's that's what we're working with right now. You go dot, 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 dot. All right. So now we want to go vertical. We're going to go top down. And then we're going to go bottom up. <coughs> Just connecting the dot. Notice I'm going one way and I'm coming down the other. All right. So now you've got this big grid. And what are you going to do next, right? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start working on circular strokes. We're going to start doing basically that. Now notice I'm going clockwise. What you want to do is you'll find that every movement has a natural, I guess you would feel a little bit more comfortable with it and we want to work against that. So the ones we struggle with, we want to go the other way. So this is counterclockwise. So what we're going to do in this now is we're going to fill up this whole row, first row, with clockwise, and we want to try to keep it within the confinements of the square. Use both your hands. Notice this one is just kind of like like this. It's it's a little harder to sit in airbrush when you're just kind of freehanding it like this when you're first starting. Even when you get uh, you know a little bit more skilled, you still want to feel like you can use your whole body, your shoulders, your elbows, your forearms. So now I'm going to go counterclockwise. I clockwise. Hell on that. Now I'm going to go clockwise. First time. Now I've got squares with circles in them. We're not done yet. Now what we're going to do is diagonal dagger strokes. Now a dagger stroke is kind of like basically you start off heavy and then you taper it off like that so it starts off heavy and it kind of disappears so this is going to be control and, and a practice of releasing uh, the airbrush towards the end of the stroke so we're going to start off heavy release heavy release heavy release heavy release heavy release what that does is it fades out the stroke uh, as it's going away you can see it almost disappears into nothing couple different ways you can do that. You can do that by keeping your brush uh, at the same distance from the surface or what I like to do is I kind of like flick the brush away so you're getting that kind of action but you see what I'm saying? Kind of pulling away at the same time and it gives you that nice fade out. So those ones that went that way what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up heavy fade out, heavy fade out, heavy fade out, heavy fade out heavy fade out, heavy fade out. But the whole time I'm doing this, the objective is to have these points and those coordinates in mind. That's what you're trying to aim between. You're trying to get all that stuff, you know, basically giving you some direction as to where you're trying to go. Otherwise, we can sit here and just go, you know, spell your name out. Woo there we go. So, let down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 all right? So give me like 10 rows. I want to see you guys go through this exercise. It's going to help you out. It might seem boring, but you might be surprised at how challenging it really is once you start uh, airbrushing. So. I'll be around to guys help you out and watch as we do it. Challenging it is. <laughs> well, this gives it a reverse cool. mm -hmm. effect of the spots on there. Yeah. Huh? All right. 
you could do the same thing like with with this too if you wanted. And, uh, to get a little bit more contrast in there, you know what I'm saying? And mug for the camera. Always go back slightly with the little sandpaper, color it down, you know, like, I think that this is, it's great if you're doing snakes, but it might be a little bit too much ambiguous. It almost looks like, yeah, it almost looks like it sat down on, it, on something while it was wet and it transferred it, you know what I mean? Seems like it had a mesh under the hair. Yeah, you're gonna add more water. Add some water. Back just a little bit like that. Yeah. Just be real careful. Try not to go through your purple. Yeah, that's probably a good start, but I'd be real cautious of using those these here for this effect. I think you're better off with the with this stuff here. Yeah. As far as to achieve that likeness, you know, of that. But yeah, you can and then sand some back. Use a combination of sanding back and then additive. You know, and then a lot of the speckle, some water technique. It's a little bit of everything. It'll give you that natural look. That's looking better already, having it sanded back and splotchy like that. So if you're uh, making moon eyes of a girl. Yeah. So what are you going to do, Jim? Um, actually, I'm going to put a saying that I've always loved uh, on the back of my guitar. Matt sucks. Well, that's one on the front. <laughs> oh, okay, good, good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted this. It's going to say it's the feet that keep the feet, but it's the soul that makes it roll. Okay. Yeah. So Diana's uh, printing that out for me on the plotter. And, yeah. Cool. Is it going to be on one of those, uh, like, scripty... I want something kind of uh, hot rod, red paint looking font, something like that. Yeah, right on. Yeah. This came out great, though. Yeah, it did. Are you guys in battle over the... Yeah, it peeled off. Hand it over to you, but sometimes you gotta like try to like get these things started. If you got a good squeegee, probably won't have any issues. I was doing pretty slow this year. Back leg, that was too much. I got this block here too. So you're going to want to team up to do this without risking too much. Thank you. Some of the stuff's going to take a little bit to stick completely down. You know why? It's because mine, you probably won't have the same problems, but I grabbed the first piece that's probably been sitting exposed to UV, and it... Uh, that's something to the tack on. Like a piece of tape that's been sitting around on a shelf for a while, you know, you go and grab it. That's it. So that's what you got to do. You can see it's not exactly perfect but it's pretty damn close. And so what you want is to fit it in there the best you can. Um, and then you're gonna weed out the transfer tape. 
And sometimes it's best to just kind of rip it and tear it off instead of trying to do it all. Hey, Chris. Piece. The one thing you will want to notice Radio is um, if you're working on, you want to make sure that you're when you're moving this around on your easel that it's not marring up your paint job. Pretty, like you probably want to be real careful of that. Uh, make sure that you've got adequate amount of tape on there that it isn't uh, going to scratch up that purple. Because it's going to be bare naked by, you know what I mean? Okay, so I'm going to go with a gold on this. And it, but you can see how it's pretty tight, but there's still a little wiggle room in the graphic, so you're just going to try to center it under the best you can. The tip, I think the forward and back position are the most important. I think once you get this established here and there, I think it'd be fine getting the rest of it. But don't press it all the way down until you've had a chance to see where everything landed. You know what I mean? If something's off, then something needs to be moved and repositioned. And after you get that done, then what we'll take is um, two inch tape, one and three quarter, to be just as effective. And depending on what color you're using, you know, like gold, gold goes everywhere. If you're using silver, silver goes everywhere. Anything metallic goes freaking everywhere. So I'm just going to tape off this return. I'm going to be doing this next color with the airbrush. And I should be able to con contain the overspray or whatever contamination uh, just within the distance of this two inch or inch and a half paper. So that's it. Go ahead and get your stuff laid out and uh, I give you a hand when you get this up and that's what we got to do.